What's up, guys? I'm Mike from Stocked Up, and welcome back to the Stocks with Mike and Tom show. We have a very interesting episode for you guys here today. We have news about Robinhood under SEC investigation. We also have a $50 million options trade that expires this week. We're also going to be going over uh, RKT earnings, and we have a lot more important news for you guys for the market for the rest of this week. We have some solid plays, too, so make sure you stick around towards the end of the episode to hear all the news, the plays, and especially the $50 million options trade for this week. Uh, if you guys aren't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe to see our daily videos on your YouTube homepage every single day. But let's get right into it. So Tom, what happened in the market today? Yeah, the biggest news is really Rocket Mortgage. Um, the, the recent IPO actually had pretty, uh, pretty bad earnings. I mean, their earnings weren't terrible, but the stock ended up falling on these earnings and the company reported net revenue of five billion dollars with a net income of 3.5 billion dollars and jay farner who's the ceo of rocket he went ahead and said that as we look into the second half of the year we continue to see strength and durability in consumer sentiment um, record low interest rates and an improving u.s real estate market continue to drive the demand for homes and that's going to really help rocket mortgage going forward because obviously they give people mortgages and they do it pretty quickly and they also recently ipo'd at around 17 dollars and 50 cents and have just really skyrocketed from there and it's been pretty nice to see this stock actually doing well and i know a lot of our discord members have been trading this one uh pretty much on the way up as well yeah for sure i mean they they ipo'd pretty recently like this past month they or yeah they ipo'd about a month ago so uh, overall, that's interesting to see, mainly because a lot of people have been talking about this stock. Uh, it's been pretty volatile. Uh, overall, it's been doing pretty good. But definitely those low interest rates in the, the booming real estate market is definitely helping this stock out. So uh, what other news did we have? Yeah, and the other news was that Robinhood is actually going to be under SEC investigation, which is kind of weird to hear from Robinhood. I'll bring it up here on the chart. CNBC went ahead and reported that Robinhood could pay $10 million in fines because they are um, pretty much, they did not disclose that they have a lot of clients' as orders that they sell to high-frequency traders. And those high-frequency traders could be, you know, AI algorithms, you know, predetermined that, that just sit there and buy stocks buy and sell stock or options all day long for these big banks or for anybody who can really make these uh, high frequency trading computers or algorithms that actually work correctly. But it's a it's just a big thing where Robinhood might have to pay $10 million, which is really nothing compared to how large Robinhood has gotten here. But it is showing clients that Robinhood has been selling their orders to high frequency traders. And that could be why Robinhood has a lot of, uh, a lot of let's just say time whenever you try to sell orders on Robinhood. Sometimes it lags for about, you know, two to three minutes. And, and I mean, that could be because they're trying to sell it to a high frequency trader or because, um, you know, just the way Robinhood fills their orders is really weird. And they're going to be getting in trouble here for not disclosing that correctly. A couple of years ago, all the major brokerages would, would charge their clients commissions to buy and sell pretty much anything. You know, I remember when I first started trading, I had to pay like, like, what was it? Seven or $10 just to buy. And then seven, it was like six ninety five each side. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like $7 just to buy and $7 just to sell for stocks. But nowadays pretty much all of the major brokerages are commission free trading. And uh, as we all know, it's not like these major brokerages are just going to say, Oh, well, we're not just, we're just going to not charge commissions anymore. And we're just going to miss all of that revenue. You know, these brokerages are still in the game to make money. So they make money by selling data in order flow. So whenever you go and you click buy a stock or buy an option or whenever you go to sell it, pretty much these big companies take your sell order, sell it to a huge institution like a uh, high frequency trading algorithm or uh, just like any like data, data uh, focused institution for, uh, for order flow and they take your order and what they can do is like, let's say, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give like a very, very basic example, but let's say, let's say you are trying to sell a stock for, let's say you're trying to sell Apple. Let me go to Apple right now for, uh, right now it's at about $131.40. Uh, so you might go to sell Apple and you might get filled at $131. And let's say, yeah, let's say you get filled at $131 and let's say 30 cents, right? What they can do 
is um, when you go to sell that, the big institution would buy your order and then go around and sell it on the open market. So pretty much you would lose out on 10 cents per share, but they do that, you know, millions of times per day. So like, for example, instead of selling your share for $131 and 40 cents, you would sell it for $131 and 30 cents. They would buy the share and then they'd sell it right back to the open market. So that's a very basic example. Uh, if you want to learn more about this, I highly recommend reading the book called Flash Boys. It goes into a lot more information regarding high frequency trading. And then yeah, it's really interesting because a lot of people were even trying to uh, get as close as they could to wherever that exchange was. So like in New York, they'd be trying to, to build supercomputers like under the, uh, the, the exchange in, in New York, for example. Yeah, for sure. So underneath the exchanges in New York, there's actually these servers that are connected through fiber optic cables, literally right underneath the exchanges uh, that have, that, that all they do is high frequency trade. So they're just making millions and millions of trades per day, making like less than a cent on each trade or some of them, you know, they make a couple dollars, but uh, each, each uh, HFT is what they call it is different. So, and of course it's proprietary, but uh, as far as the public knows, um, you know, it's, it's all for HFTs underneath the exchanges and, uh, they, they operate in like literally quicker than milliseconds. So they're just firing trades all day long. And then another thing I've noticed is the S and P 500 is exploding obviously, but the VIX is also rising ticker symbol VXX. The VIX is a volatility index. So pretty much when the VXX rises, it means stuff is about to get pretty crazy in the market. And typically the VXX rises when the market falls. It is very rare to see the VIX and the SPY move up at the same time. Does it happen? Yes. But what it's indicating is the market is about to get pretty volatile. So, you know, the market is just exploding up. The S&P the S &P 500 and the NASDAQ broke all time highs again. And the Dow had an amazing day too. Uh, closing above 29,000. So overall, the market is exploding, but the VIX might be this hidden warning signal saying, you know, that, that we might see like some sort of reversal soon. You know, it's just very interesting to see the VIX up while the market is up too. And it's not like we're just seeing one green day in the VIX. The VIX has been up since the middle of last week. Yeah, and gold is even down as well, which is, I mean, that's pretty normal whenever you see the market going up. But over this whole recovery, gold has been flying up with the market. So now gold's going down with the market, and, or now gold is going down when the market goes up, and VXX is going up with the market instead of gold now. So yeah, trading's just getting really weird with the virus going on. And I mean, I couldn't believe that gold had this nice run up it had, um, you know, along with uh, the market. But I mean, that could also have something to do with uh, with the dollar uh, losing a lot of value as well. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it has to do with the inflation. You know, inflation is definitely ramping up, at least what Powell, that's what Powell wants. Um, so uh, gold has definitely risen uh, because of that. So um, yeah, I mean, overall, it's just weird to see the VIX and the SPY moving up at the same time. Pretty much, it means, hey, watch out. We can definitely see a reversal in the market sometime soon. Uh, the VIX is an index, which is uh, VIX, but overall it is rising. It's definitely in a, an important warning signal to watch out for. So uh, now for our Discord member of the day. And our Discord member of the day is Guam Bomb. Uh, he's been making some amazing trades with the new bot lately. So uh, overall, great job with the trades. Uh, thank you so much for sharing a ton of positivity and great vibes in the Discord. Tom and I really appreciate it. So huge shout out to you. But now for our momentum plays for tomorrow. And the first one is Google. Had an amazing day today, broke all time highs. What levels should we be watching for tomorrow? Really just watch for them to break 1726.10, which was their high of today. Yep. And if it breaks that, we will like it to the upside. The next stock is AMAT. Had a pretty good day today. It's approaching all time highs. Yeah, this was kind of crazy. Uh, let's see what the all time high is really quick. Um, yeah, I would just go ahead and watch for them to just break the high of today. Well, it was about 65.51, which is where they are right now. So just watch for it to break 65.60. And then if they break that, just watch 65.75. Yeah, and that one is also to the upside. And then last but not least, we have MU. Yeah, this has been amazing the past few days. Just watch for them to break 48.20 on the dot. 
Awesome. So thank you for that. And now for the $50 million options trade that expires this week, we are looking at the Tesla 500 strike call options that expired this week, September 4th. Now I know what everyone's thinking, $50 million in Tesla call options, right? Tesla has been the stock to, to definitely have call options for, for this year. But overall, for this week, the 500 strike call options are pretty far out of the money. You know, we're over $50, you know, we're actually like $60 out of the money now for including the after hours movement. But it really looks like the person behind this huge Tesla trade is shorting these options. So, so do not go ahead and just buy the Tesla 500 strike call options. Basically, they're making a bet that Tesla is going to be below $500 by this Friday. So uh, take what you guys want of take what you guys want out of that information. But uh, by the looks of this trade, by the looks of the setup, by the price action and just the expiration date, it really looks like the person behind this trade is shorting the options, meaning that they want Tesla below $500 by this Friday. All right. So now for the comments from the previous episode. And with the first comment, we have Oliver saying, what do you guys think of Procter & Gamble puts? So PG, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not too sure I like them on puts. It seems like they've just had a pretty decent day over the past few days as well as the past couple months. So, I mean, with Procter & Gamble, I know they sell a lot of home goods and stuff that people use all the time. Um, this is a stock that I personally wouldn't be shorting, especially right now, or, or I wouldn't be getting puts on it anyways. I would more of, at, uh, more of look for calls on PG if they can continue their momentum up. I mean, they're pretty close to all-time highs, and I mean, it's just nice to see them um, this high. But um, with everything going up so much, I mean, I'm definitely going to be looking at puts on them. But it's just one of those things you just can't fight the trend till you actually see red days, almost like we have on Tesla right now. Yeah, I mean, they've had a, a pretty strong trend, and especially with this huge green candle, I I personally would not get into that play, at least right now. So uh, with the next comment, we have Appa saying, hey guys, great video as usual. What are your thoughts on Uber? It's at a major resistance. Do you see it moving forward or returning to support? Thanks. So what do you think about that, Uber? Yeah, I mean, I'd actually have to say that I, I could actually see Uber maybe going up over the next couple of years. I mean, their earnings were negative $1.02 uh, per share. And I mean, that's better than whenever they even IPO'd. Whenever they IPO'd, they were, you know, negative $4.72 per share on their earnings. So it's good to see them doing good with their earnings. And I know California uh, also helped them out by allowing them to keep their, um, to keep their drivers under contract. Uh, classified as contract workers rather than uh, classifying them as full-time workers. So that's going to help them out too. And I, I just think that Uber overall has a lot of room to grow in the long term, but it's just going to be one of those really risky stocks. But as far as this, this initial support goes that I see that you're, uh, your resistance that I see that you're looking at, I think, I personally think that this one will get broken this time. For sure. Uh, with the next comment, we have Ovo saying, I'm new here. Just wondering if you shared your thoughts on workhorse. Maybe you made a video on it already. So uh, what do you think about Workhorse? I mean, I know they had some pretty major contracts and they had a huge run up this year. I mean, uh, just looking back in the past six months, went from about lows of $1.32 to highs of $22.90. So, I mean, they definitely had a great run up and I know they do have some major contracts and they're, they're really just holding their ground right now. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I honestly expected them whenever they kind of created these lower highs over here on uh, on you know eight slash three and eight slash four August third and August fourth. I thought that this was actually going to be you know maybe to where they started to fill this gap back down and maybe head back down towards six dollars. But Workhorse actually proved me wrong, and like you said, they just held their ground, and I honestly like it. It seems like they held that ground and they they broke that lower high back to the upside, and they did. They were red today, but I could see this stock being green over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, I can see that too. A lot of it depends on the market and catalyst. Like uh, Workhorse is heavily influenced by the market. So, I mean, oh, obviously it is, but it's heavily influenced by news. So um, I would say because of that, it makes it a little bit more risky of a setup. But uh, especially in this case, uh, there's definitely a lot of money to be made with it uh, if you get lucky on the news. So for the long term, I can definitely see it going up. I, I haven't researched them too much uh, fundamentally, but um, I, I know enough 
and they do have some good contracts. But uh, overall, I can see them going up in the long term. Uh, for the short term, a lot of it just depends on the news. You know, workhorse, like I said, is a heavily is heavily influenced by the news. So if they have some good articles come out or good catalysts or upgrades or any new contracts that can definitely influence uh, the stock in a bullish way. So with that being said, Tom, do you have any last minute stocks, options, or any insight for the market tomorrow? Yeah, my last stock's actually going to be Boeing. I'm switching it up from space. Can uh -oh. you believe it? <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> But yeah, Boeing's been looking very good the past few days, and I really think this stock can move. We're bouncing off the 100 SMA on an intraday chart, and that's great to see. And if we go out to a daily chart, you can see that it's almost like we're bouncing off of this trend line once again. And I just love these consolidations that Boeing has had, where they just have this big step up, and then you know, like a couple months of consolidation, then a big step up, and a couple more months of consolidation, and now we're either looking for that big step up or the big step down. So really, I'm just going to be watching this to either break of the high of about $180.50, which is the like about um, the last couple weeks high, or I'm just going to watch for it to fall out of this trend line, which if it breaks like $160 to the downside, I, you know, I could see Boeing easily falling down to like 140. But if they break this to the upside, I could see Boeing heading back up to this high possibly of 230. So it's just one of those stocks that it's going to move a lot in one direction or the other. And we're getting really close to a, a pretty good support right now. So I would definitely keep Boeing on your radar. For sure. So thank you for sharing that. I really like Boeing for the long term. Uh, they had a, about a, a little over a 75% recovery from their lows back in March. But overall, I think they're a pretty great company for the long term. Um, overall, I really like them. So uh, thank you for sharing that. And thank you guys so much for watching this video to the end. Tom and I really appreciate all the support to the YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for everyone who hits that like button, comments down below, and of course, our new subscribers. So uh, Tom and I really appreciate it. So thank you guys so much for all the support. Uh, if you guys want to check out our new bot that calls out intraday option setups, you can click the Stocked Up Options Alerts link in the description down below. And as always, if you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below. Other than that, thanks for watching.